Hi there, and thank you very much for joining me back. So our lesson will start with an explanation of an excellent free script that is going to save us a lot of time working with keyframes. This script is called Ease Copy. First, I will show you an example of how it works, and then we will install it together. First of all, I will hide the grid. I will also close the properties of the layer. And now, I will create a square. I don't want a stroke. And its color will be blue. So here is my square ready. And now I go back to the selection tool using the shortcut V. Now I will animate the square I created. So I'll select the layer of the square and press P to open the position parameter. I will create a keyframe when the square is standing here at second zero and at second two. I'll bring the square here. Let's see how it looks. Now I want the square to rotate while moving. So I'll press shift R to add the rotation parameter. And now I want to talk about this parameter. We have two values here. The numbers with the degrees represent the degrees of rotation. And these numbers represent how many complete rotations the layer will make. I want one round. So at the beginning of the animation, I set a keyframe zero rotations. And when I get to the second two, the square will do one rotation. As you can see, the square rotated exactly one time. If I want to change the direction of the rotation, I can add a minus before this number. This way, the square will rotate in the opposite direction. And now, I want the square's keyframes to behave exactly the same way as the sphere's keyframes. Meaning, they will have the same easy ease velocity. So I can see what velocity I gave the dot. I see it's 85 and 85. And now, I can select the keyframes of the square, change them to easy ease keyframes, and then change their velocity like the dot. Or instead of this whole process, I can use the script I have under Windows. It's called Ease Copy. I'll select it, and as you can see, it pops up in the overflow panel. With the help of Ease Copy, I can copy these keyframes exactly with their unique velocity. So I'll select these two keyframes and click Copy. Here I see that the script copied two keyframes. And instead of changing the keyframes of the square manually, I can select all the keyframes I have here and click on Ease. And now, the keyframes behave in the same animation as the dot, meaning they have the same velocity. A very important thing to know about this script is that when we copy two keyframes, I won't be able to paste the animation over three keyframes because I copied two and not three. Now I want to show you another example, but this time with three keyframes. I'll create a scale animation for the square. At this point in time, I'll set the square to 100. And at this point in time, I'll set the square to 200. And at this point, it will go back to 100. And now, all I have to do is just copy the three keyframes of the dot, click on copy, select the three keyframes of the square, and click on ease. Without going into the velocity panel, we created a uniform animation for all our keyframes very quickly. And now, let's see how to download and install the script, both for Windows and Mac users. First, we need to save the project and close it. Now go to the AE Scripts website. You can find the link in the description of the video or the folder of the course. Now you need to register to the site. I already have a user, so I'll log in. 
Now search the script. Click on it and enter your price. You can write zero or leave a tip to the creators of the script. After that, click on Add to Cart. Then go to the shopping basket up here. In the shopping basket, you can see the product. Click on Proceed to Checkpoint. You can press Continue until you reach the third part, where you click on Place Order. Now go to My Download and License and download the script. Choose a convenient folder for you and extract the winner or zip file after downloading. After the extraction, you can delete the winner or the zip file. Now go into the folder until you see the JSX file. You need to copy the JSX file and paste it into After Effects folder. First of all, you need to know where your software is installed. For Windows users, you can find it in the C drive, Program Files, Adobe, After Effects. On my computer, I decided to install all the Adobe files on the D drive. This is why I don't see the Adobe programs here. So I go to my D drive and open the folder from there. Now enter the folder support files, scripts, script UI panels, and paste the JSX file here. I already have the script so that I won't paste it again. And for Mac users, open Finder, go to Applications, Adobe, After Effects, Scripts, Script UI Panels, and paste the JSX file here. And now, go to the folder you created for the course and open the After Effects file you created, called Class Zero. Go to Window, and if you scroll down, you will see the new script installed. You can scale up this panel or drag it to the Overflow menu. To unlock the panel, open the little menu and click on Unlock Panel. You can practice it with me. So after we've installed our second script, we can move on to create the cool downloader animation you see now in the example. We can delete this layer from the composition. So first of all, let's delete all the keyframes we've made so far. And now, I have a question. What shortcut will we use to return the dot to the center of the composition? So for those who answered correctly, well done. For those who didn't answer correctly, don't worry, you will remember it at the end, because we will use this shortcut a lot in the courses. So I'll select the layer and press Control Home. I could do it using the Align tool as well. Let's close the properties of the layer here. And now let's reduce the size of the dot. We will select the layer and press S to open the scale parameter. Now let's see what size it will be. I think 60 is excellent. And now, let's create the animation of our dot. So as we learned in the previous lessons, we have a special animation method where we animate from the end to the beginning. It is convenient for us to create the animation with this method because we know that the dot should reach the center of the frame at a certain point. So we're going to find a point in time in our timeline, for example, second one. And now, we're going to animate the position parameter, so let's press P to open that parameter. Create a keyframe at this time code, and now I go to the beginning of the timeline, and move the dot to be here. I move it while holding the shift key, to move it on straight axis. From here I want the dot to start going out of the frame.
notice that the dot doesn't stop in the middle as I want. I can create this pause by changing the keyframes to easy ease. Let me explain. Let's select the keyframes and press F9. And if we enter the graph editor, we will see the graph of the keyframes we created. We see here the speed of the keyframes. So the speed here is high, and here it is really low. Actually, there is no speed at all. So here we have a little stop because we turn the keyframes from linear to ease. Now I can extreme the easing of the keyframes, so the pause be longer. Let's select this keyframe in the middle and pull this handle here. And this handle here. That way we increase the period of the pause. It can be increased even more. And now, I want to remind you how to do it without the graph editor. So I'll select my keyframes, and now I want to change the easing of those keyframes to normal. I'll press F9 again. Now I will double-click on one of the keyframes while holding the Alt key to enter the keyframes velocity panel. And here I will change the velocity to 85 and 85. Let's see how it looks in the graph editor. It will start slowly, pick up speed and then repeat the same thing. Looks great. As we saw in the final result of this animation. In the end, we should have three dots and not one. So let's see how we do it. First, we need to duplicate the dot. The shortcut to duplicating layers is Ctrl D. Now I will press U to see the keyframes of the layer. The dots are on top of each other, that's why I don't see the new dot. Now we need slightly change the animation of the new dot. Let's go to the first keyframe of this layer and change the position of the dot at this point. Let's move it here. And now I'll move forward to move this layer here, using the arrows, while holding the shift key. Okay, and now let's change the last keyframe to this position. Let's see how it looks. Now we will do the same for another dot. So we'll duplicate the first dot again. I'll place the new layer up here and press U to open the keyframes. Remember that it is very important to stand with the time indicator on the exact keyframe we want to change. So I'll move the first keyframe here. The second here. And the last keyframe here. Set the preview to fit and let's see what we come up with. Now I want to design the dots in a slightly different way. I will turn off the fill so that they will only have a stroke. The stroke is currently large, so I will reduce it. As you can see, I don't see what the dots look like because of the layer's borders. This is not a problem because there is a super handy shortcut, Control shift h This shortcut hides the boundaries of the layer. And in this way, I can see details that I had not seen before. Now I can reduce the stroke even more. And now I can press Ctrl Shift H again to bring back the layer boundaries. Looking great. Let's save the project. Press Ctrl S. And now I want to teach you a cool principle in the world of animation called overlapping action. Using this principle we can create a more interesting animation by delaying our layers. Meaning that the layers will start moving one after the other and not all at once. I'll show you what I mean. So first, 
I need to arrange my layers in a certain order so that it will be convenient for me to work later. In my case, I want this dock to start the animation. So I'll move this layer below and change the name to dot one. I'll call this layer dot two. And this layer I will leave the name because this is the layer that should enter last. Now I will select all the layers and press U to see all the keyframes. We can get a little closer. And now I'll move forward two frames and move this layer here. Move two more frames forward and move the last layer here. What will happen now is that the first dot will enter the scene, followed by the second and then the third in one delay after another. Let's see how it looks. I think we can change the velocity to 90 for a more interesting animation. So let's select these keyframes, hold Alt, and double click on one of them. Change here to 90 by 90. And now, I will copy these keyframes using the script we installed earlier. Use Copy. I will copy the three keyframes from this layer and paste them to the two layers to maintain the same animation style. Excellent. Now let's use a cool effect called Echo. So let's go to Effects and Presets. If you don't see this panel, go to Window and click on Effects and Presets. Write Echo. There are several ways to add the effect on the layer. The first way is to select the layer I want and double-click on the effect. The effect will automatically be applied to the layer we selected. The second way, it doesn't matter to us if we select the layer or not, we can simply drag the effect onto the layer we want, and there it is, the effect has been added to the layer. The third way is to simply drag the effect directly onto the layer through the preview screen. Alright, so now, as you can see, the effects panel appears automatically. And he tells us that the layer called dot underscore three has an effect. I can see the effect here, or I can see the effect through the layer itself. It's less convenient to work like this, so I'll close everything here and go to work on the effect through the effects panel. Let's change the effects parameters to create a cool motion trail effect on the layer. We will change here to minus 0.001. Here we will change to 10 or 20. Note that this effect is making a hard time on the computer. And what it does is it produces a smear for the layer at the moments when the layer increases its speed. I'll come here with the time indicator and click end to see just that part of my timeline. The animation looks good, and with that, we finish the lesson. In the next lesson, we will continue to create the final animation while we learn more important options that exist in After Effects, for example, the null object and many other things. See you at the next one.